welcome to today's video. Today I want to give you a review of this primer. This is the Tarte Base Tape Hydrating Primer. I received this little sample in my Ipsy bag from last month, which would have been April, and I have been testing this out in a number of different ways with a number of different foundations, and I have some thoughts and a review on this. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the product itself. I am going to show you my first impression day as well as another day where I filmed uh, a check-in to sort of show you something different I had noticed. And then I'm going to give you my review on whether this does what it says it is going to do and whether you may want to get it. Uh, and for all of that there are going to be timestamps down below. I've done reviews on Tarte products before, so I'm not going to really talk about the company, but I will put some other uh, links down below to other reviews that I have done. So this is the base tape. This is obviously based off of Shape Tape, which is, I would argue, their most famous product at this point, which is their concealer. I have never tried it. Um, I think at this point, if you wanted it, you could order it off of uh, Tarte's website here in Canada. I understand when it first came out it was an ultra Ulta exclusive and because we don't have those here in Canada it wasn't something you could easily get your hands on here. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. We are talking about base tape. If you want to buy this in Canada, it, the full size of it at least, which is a little more than one fluid ounce, it is going to cost you $39 Canadian. In their description they say prep yourself before you perfect yourself. Turn up the base with this vegan coconut priming serum that hydrates your skin for 12 hours. This rich yet lightweight makeup magnet is infused with a blend of coconut, yum, and botanicals to help nourish and smooth skin's appearance. So they say that it extends the wearer foundation and keeps skin hydrated for 12 hours. It has jojoba and grapeseed extract to help moisturize, and it's infused with coconut for its smoothing benefits and delicious scent. It is made without parabens, mineral oil, phthalates, triclosan, sodium lauryl, sulfate, and gluten. So you use this in the same way you would use any primer. They say to use one or two pumps and smooth it all over your face. I always think it's good to judge a product against what they say it will do. So in addition to moisturizing and helping your makeup last longer, they also talked about consumer panel results. So they said people said that their skin felt nourished and had a healthy glow, felt hydrated and smoother, uh, and that they their skin felt softer and it absorbed quickly and easily. They also said that people um, said that it helped foundation apply more evenly, that it helped skin look smoother under foundation, and that they saw an improvement in the appearance of fine lines when, when applied under foundation. So those are the kind of things that I'm going to talk about, whether I noticed those things or I didn't when I was using this primer. I think at this point we will go into the first impression day and uh, the other check-in day that I have of footage, and then I'll come back for the final review. In using this primer for the first time, it was much more liquidy than I expected it to be. You can see it moving down my finger there. And I decided to test it on half of my face and test it for a few days on the same half of my face. It has a coconut smell to it and feels very much like a light moisturizer, there does not have the silicone slip to it that you often get in primers. I had a lot of dryness on my nostrils, so I made sure to rub this primer in where I had a lot of that flaky dryness. I decided to use my CoverGirl Outlast Active because I know quite well how this works. I applied it with a beauty blender first to the side of my face without primer just to make sure there wouldn't be any transfer over. And then to the side with primer and I didn't notice a huge difference on application. The only immediate difference that I notice is I feel like there's a little bit more dry skin that's being clung to on my nose on this side. Uh, than the side and I feel like the side is a little bit dewier just has a little bit more reflect to it on the side where I have the primer I'll zoom you in so hopefully you can see there seems to be just a little bit more shine here as far as I can tell and as I said I see a little bit of dryness right there and a little bit less of it emphasized on that side. 
When I finished up my makeup, it was about 9 a.m. I ended up not using a powder because I wanted to see how the primer functioned with just the foundation so there was nothing else interfering with it. And I didn't really notice a big difference at all. There was maybe a bit more um, glow on the side that had the primer, but at the start of the day, not too big of a difference. It's about 20 after 1, so this has been on for a little more than 4 hours. I've taken a very close look at my face, and I can see a couple tiny little differences. Not huge, but there are three things that I've noticed. And I'll zoom you in so hopefully you can see them as well. To start with, while both sides of my face are a little shiny because I didn't powder today, this side does feel a little bit shinier and a little bit greasier than this side, which is to be expected. It's a hydrating primer, so it's going to have more of a moisturizing effect. It's not there to try to mattify my skin at all. So I do notice that. I'd say they both look equally shiny. However, when I touch my face, this side feels just a little bit more um, oily <laughs> than the other side. I will say though that in looking at my forehead, I feel as though the lines have separated on, I have wrinkles in my forehead, that the foundation separated a little bit more on this side than on this side in those wrinkles. I find them a little bit more noticeable on this side. Surprisingly though, one thing that I have noticed is the dryness that's on my nose right now, which I don't think any primer could 100% deal with, looks more pronounced on the side where I use the hydrating primer than on the other side. Now, whether that's because this side is just drier, I don't think I looked quite close enough at the start of the day, um, but it's not going to, from this experience so far, like dramatically, magically change any actual dry skin that you have and make, you know, everything smooth over it. That would probably be a lot to ask for a primer, but it's not doing that. So I'm gonna continue wearing this and do another check-in at the end of the day. Hey guys, so it is the end of the day, the end of when I'm filming. It's coming up on six o'clock, which means this has been on for almost nine hours. I took a very, very close look at my face before coming and sitting down here, and I really can't see any difference from one side of my face to the other right now. You'll notice a little bit more when I turn the light down how shiny I am all over my face, um, which is sort of to be expected with how my face reacts when I don't powder. Um, but I am, you know, no more shiny from one side of my face on the primer side to the other side. I also thought like maybe my blush hung in a fraction more on this side, but really no noticeable difference. So then the next steps in testing this primer are to try it with different foundations, try it with different powders on top, to keep testing to see if I notice any difference that this primer is making. So in continuing to test this primer, I'm still just using it on this side of my face. It will both give me a chance to do a direct comparison whenever I'm wearing it, but also I want to, you know, if I have any kind of reaction to it, if it breaks me out and I start to notice that I'm breaking out only on one side of my face, that will give me more of an idea of whether it's the primer that is causing it. So what I've done today is use the primer on this side of my face and then I used a stick foundation. It's the Sephora Make No Mistakes Foundation. I sometimes use it on days where I only need my makeup to look good for a short period of time, often when I'm just putting makeup on to film. Uh, today I'll wear it all day because I'm testing, but it tends to be drier and a bit cakier. So I wanted to see, since this is a bit of a moisturizing foundation, what does it do to a foundation that's a little bit drier? And what I did notice in applying uh, the stick foundation, which I did with a brush this time because it's a bit stiffer, even with a light powdering over the top, I did notice that there was more luminosity on the side of my face where I used the Tarte primer. It just had a little bit more glow to it, and I'll zoom you in and see if I can show you that. It's all very slight differences, so we'll see if I can show you. So this is the side of my face without the primer, and I mostly notice the luminosity just on my cheeks. So without primer, and then with primer. And I hope you can see that there's just a little bit more dewiness and brightness there. Now along with that comes the fact that I do find my pores to be a little bit more emphasized on this side, but it's sort of the trade-off between like looking a little more dewy and luminous, 
but having your pores emphasized a little versus being a little bit more matte, but maybe having them a little bit more blurred. So that is what I'm noticing with this foundation on my next day of testing, second day of testing. My review of this product. Does it moisturize? Yes, it does. And I think it was really nice to have a moisturizing primer that did not feel in any way like it had um, silicone in it. It didn't feel that slip in any way. It just felt like a really good moisturizer. Now the question then becomes, do you need a moisturizing primer if it's like moisturizer? Um, you know, and I think if you have drier skin or skin without a lot of glow, this is going to help. Did I find that my makeup lasted longer with it? I did not. Um, in all the testing that I did, I couldn't see a noticeable difference in one side of my face to the other on whether my makeup lasted longer, maybe like a shade longer, but really unnoticeable to normal observation about any longevity effects that this had. So I did feel that my skin felt softer because it felt moisturized, it did feel hydrated, and I did find that it absorbed quickly. I didn't feel like with some uh, foundation primers I had to let this set in any way, and in fact if I did apply a foundation on top of it while my skin was still absorbing it, it kind of mixed in with the foundation and made it a bit glowier. Did it apply more evenly with this primer? I don't think so. I didn't find that the evenness really made much difference. Uh, skin looking smoother and reducing fine lines. It's interesting because I did notice that some of my forehead wrinkles, it looks like the foundation separated a little less on the side with the primer, so it feels like it did help fine lines. In terms of smoothness though, because it is that sort of hydrating and added a glow, I found that my pores were emphasized a little bit. So who is going to want this foundation primer. So if you have skin that is drier and maybe a little bit duller uh, and you want to add a glow to it and you want to have just as many hydrating effects as you can have through the day, I think this is a good primer. It's not going to, if you actually have flaky dry skin, um, do anything about that flakiness. And in fact, I think if there is flakiness you're trying to deal with, you are more likely to have locked with a pore filling kind of primer that tends to coat and smooth the skin, but in terms of hydration, I think this is really good. I do love the scent of it. I love the smell of coconut. I know some people are more sensitive to coconut, but I really enjoy it. Uh, and I do think that if you are somebody who uses a more matte foundation or a foundation that can start to look a little cakey, this really does a nice job for at least the first couple of hours um, with adding some glow and some more life to it. Uh, I don't find that it extends your makeup wear. Maybe if you paired this with a setting spray that did allow your makeup to last longer, that would have the effect, but it didn't have any kind of detrimental effect. So I guess what you're looking at is, do you want to have a primer that does not have any silicone in it, that is very moisturizing, that adds a little bit of a glow, and also seems to help with foundation separation in fine lines. Because if that's what you're looking for, this is going to do it for you. If you're just looking for uh, something that makes your foundation last longer, this isn't necessarily what you're looking for. So those are the kinds of benefits that I noticed in my wear, and I hope that was helpful for you. So if this review was helpful, consider giving this video a thumbs up. Uh, let me know if you've tried this primer, uh, if you have drier skin or more oily skin or combination skin, how it worked out for you. Let me know that in the comments, and I look forward to seeing all of you in my next video. Bye!